Hey, this is Nick Karnick, and you're watching Practical Examples in React. Today we're going to implement public and protected routes using React Router. Let's dive into some code. We're running a basic React application here via codesandbox.io. All the React Router components used in a web application should be imported from React Router DOM. So let's go ahead and add that dependency to React Router DOM. Let's create a component called landing page. We're going to return a React component here. First, we import React from React. And we're going to export landing page as a functional component. Let's return some markup here. And I'm going to return landing page here. When I save, it's going to rearrange the the uh, the markup. All right, going back to index, we're going to import our landing page. Oops, from landing page, and let's let's um, load the landing page right here and notice that landing page prints right there all right next we're going to import browser router from react router dom browser router basically gives access to the history api and keeps the ui in sync with the url now we need to wrap our app component with browser router so let's go ahead and do that. All right, everything still works as expected. Let's import route and switch from React Router DOM. We're going to convert landing page to a route. So let's remove landing page here. We're going to create a route component and pass in landing page as a component reference to route. So notice that landing page loads here. Anytime a route does not specify a path, it will load a component regardless of what's in the URL. So let's make this load only when the path equals root or slash. Let's try going to slash app. Notice what happens. Landing page is still loading. That's because it does a prefix match. And so essentially it matches on slash here and still loads landing page. What we need to do is specify the exact property so that it only loads when the route is the root in this case. We're going to create a component called app layout which will load when we specify the app route. First let's take care of returning a react component here. So we are going to return react from sorry import react from react and then we're going to return or export a constant called app layout which is going to equal to a function and we're going to return some markup here let's call this app layout and on save it's going to reorder everything now let's go back to index and we're going to import app layout from the app layout file and let's create another route here so if I copy and paste this notice that we'll get two instances of landing page I'm going to replace this with app layout and we only want app layout to load when the path matches slash app so it disappears there now if I were to put an app it's going to load app layout if I were to remove app here and go back to the root, it's going to show landing page. Now, what if we wanted to protect components under the app route and only make them available to users who were authenticated? Before we can do this, let's create a file called auth.js to track the login status. This class will export an instance of the class.
so that we mimic the singleton pattern. And internally, we're going to create a constructor with the property called this.authenticated and set that to false. We'll create a login method which will set this.authenticated to true. And let's also take in a callback simulating some asynchronous operation here, going back to the server and coming back. And when it's done, it'll call uh, back to the caller. Likewise, let's do a logout call. The callback here, this is going to set authenticated to false, and we're going to call the callback. And finally, we're going to create an is authenticated method, which is going to return the status of authenticated, indicating if we're logged in or not. In a real world scenario, you would end up managing your authentication via an interface like this that provides some abstraction. So essentially, you could be loading stuff from your local storage or the server side or look at your cookie, um, etc. Let's go to our landing page and create a button for logging in. So let's create a button here. I'm going to move this to an H1 tag. And on click, I would like to handle the callback right here. Let's reference auth from auth. Now this is all lowercase because we're expecting an instance of the auth object. We're going to call in we're going to call auth.login with a callback method that gets triggered when login is successful. We want to redirect the user to the app. So we're going to use a property called history and push the app route to it. This will tell React Router to change the URL to slash app and then redirect the, the user to the app route. So let's go ahead and click login and we have an error here. That's because this is a functional component and props should be a parameter. All right, so let's try logging in again and notice that we go to app layout and the path changes to app. Although we're redirecting to app, we're not checking if the user is actually logged in. So going back to index.js, we're going to create a new component called protected route. And this component is going to import from React, uh, is going to import React from React. And then we're simply going to export a constant called protected route which is again a functional component and we are going to return a route. Uh, we need to make sure to import route before we can use this from React Router DOM. And we're going to pass in component as a prop here, which we will destructure and call it component with a capital C. And rest of the properties that are passed in will be destructured into rest. We're going to pass in all the rest of the props into route, followed by a render prop, which is basically a property called render. And the, the value for it is a functional component. And we have to return our component, this function gets a few props passed to it in case we wanted to pass some properties from our route definition into component. So we're going to pass those along. And I've, I've made that mistake here. I need to enclose this in brackets since we're destructuring or restructuring this now. When I save, it's going to reorder everything. Now let's go back to index.js. So far everything loads. Let's import our protected route 
from protected route and we're going to copy that and simply replace this route here for app so let's save it so it's going to restructure everything so far everything seems to work okay now all protected route is doing is it's returning a route with the component that's passed in in our case it's the app layout as a render prop we also need to check if the user is actually logged in so let's import auth from auth and inside of our function here we're going to check if user is authenticated and if that's the case we're going to return a component else we're going to redirect the user so we're going to return a redirect component so we need to import redirect from react router dom we're going to render a redirect component i'm sorry return a redirect component which will tell it to go to a specific path which is passed in as an object with a property called path name and all this is available in the react router documentation we're also going to pass a state prop to it or, or a value for its state which tells it that we're coming in from whatever location we were trying to go to which will be passed in here through rest and then through props and finally down here so let's implement a logout button in the app layout i'm going to start out by turning this into an h1 followed by adding a button component that's going to be called logout and on click we want to call auth.logout so let's import auth from the auth file and we're going to call auth.logout which also takes a callback and so when logout is successful we're going to call this dot props dot history dot push and tell it to go back to the the root now the reason history is available on props here is because we loaded it via a route so the route object or component passes in a prop called history down to landing page or to app layout remember protected route is still route internally and that's why we have access to this dot props dot history if we had a separate component we had created here then it would not have access to history and in that case we would need to import with router from oops from react router dom and then use that as a higher order component let's go ahead and click logout and we have an error here and i've made the same mistake here that's not because i normally work with classes and for the purpose of this demo i had decided to use functional components so i click login and it goes to app layout i click logout it goes back to landing page now the reason we see protected react router printed is because in our index.js i am printing that here so we can remove that what happens if we were to go to some random url here if i click enter nothing loads so in that case you would want to define a route which would handle every other path that's not defined and we would basically uh, render a 404 page in this so something like 404 not found right but when i load this oh i forgot to close this there so when i um when i go to a random route that's what happens but notice what i have what happens when i go back to the root right i still see 404 not found and the reason is because we imported this component called switch but we haven't used it yet it essentially acts like a switch statement so we just want to stick it uh, up here 
in between, uh, sorry, around the routes. And it sort of acts like a switch statement uh, where it will stop after the first route that matches. Notice that the 404 not found is gone. It's still there if I type in some junk here. We're going to get 404 not found. Now going back here, login still takes us to app layout. Logout will take us to landing page. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, write them below and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. Thank you.